So before the Affordable Care Act destroyed most individual plans out there, mm -hmm. um, and now you go, you're going to go look on the exchange. I want you to tell everybody how that really works today, because it used to be that the number of carriers that you could get for individual health care, I mean, there was a bunch of companies that were doing it. A ton. When the ACA, Affordable Care Act, was signed into law and we start seeing these plans pop up, we lost, I would say, probably 75% of the free market. And you have large companies out there that used to have a portfolio of 20, 30 different health insurance plans under one roof. They shut the doors to 95% of those. Maybe they only had one or two left. It was devastating. Starting your route to retirement. Hey everybody, I'm Dean Barber, founder and CEO of Barber Financial Group and the host of the Guided Retirement Show. As we know, risk management is a critical part of your retirement. And the number one thing that we see causing people to work longer than what they really want to is health insurance. Joining me, Taylor Garner, insurance specialist and insurance consultant in the health insurance arena, along with Jason Newcomer, certified financial planner. We're going to talk today about how the health insurance part of your retirement plan can become clearer and we're going to talk about what to avoid, what to watch out for, and overall just help you make better decisions when it comes to health insurance and risk management in your retirement. Stick around and enjoy. Taylor Garner, welcome to the Guided Retirement Show. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, and Jason Newcomer, Certified Financial Planner, back for, I think, time number five here on the Guided Retirement Show. And uh, good to have you here again. Good to be here again. Always have the expertise, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Taylor, you are um, a licensed insurance consultant. Mm -hmm. I like how you call yourself a consultant as opposed to a licensed agent or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, we're going to talk today about health insurance and risk management in general. And as Jason knows, as a certified financial planner, proper risk management is really at the foundation of a solid financial plan. And the ACA, Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. has turned the health insurance industry on its head. And it has really messed up a lot of businesses. It's messed up a lot of individuals. It's caused people to do things that they didn't think that they were going to have to do. And I can't say that there wasn't some good on one side of it, but the the bad that's been done to the industry as a whole, I think um, really people need to understand what's happening out there. So let, let's first start off by talking about kind of the old model of insurance sales, right? Because mm -hmm. most people, when they think of insurance, they go, I don't want to talk. I guess it's a, a salesman, a, man, he's been trained really well. It's a bad word. They they think they don't like it, but yeah. things are changing. Well, and the problem is insurance is one of those things where you never go out and buy a policy. And the first thought is, man, I can't wait till I get to file my first claim, right? You, mm -hmm. you buy a policy hoping that you never, ever have to file a claim. Uh, and then you know you have to file a claim and then what happens? And then you start having those bad experiences and then your agent's nowhere to be found. That is so let's talk about that old that. broker model versus what you're doing today. So I appreciate that. And one of the reasons that, you know, I label myself a consultant versus the sales agent is kind of what you just said, where, you know, the old model was if you needed health insurance, you would call directly into one of the big insurance companies. We're not going to name any names on here, but you, you know what I mean? And the problem with that is if you contact a company directly, they're not going to show you what's behind that proverbial curtain. They're never going to show you what the competitors offer. They're never going to show you any of the other plans that exist out there. Their sole job is to sell you. So one of their products, one of their products, right? Because they've got a manager that they have to report to. They probably would like to see their name on a report that week or that month. So their vested interest is to put you on one of their two, three or four plans, whether it fits you or not. Consulting as a broker, that's, in my opinion, the way that this whole industry is moving. So a lot of people don't know what a broker is. They've heard it. They may have a little bit of, you know, they think they have an idea of what it is. But as a broker, I'm contracted with all of those main carriers that are out there, plus a lot of carriers, carriers or insurance companies that you may not have heard about. 
So when somebody calls me and says, hey, I need some help with health insurance or a Medicare plan, I'm not sitting there going, all right, well, I've only got four different plans that I can put them on. So, you know, I hope I get lucky here. I get to do a true needs analysis. I get to find out why are you looking for healthcare? What do you need it to cover? Do you need it to cover anybody else? What are your main concerns? And then I am going to go do my job. I'm going to go shop. I'm going to look at all the different plans that are out there. And I'm going to bring back to you the two or three options, regardless of the company name. I don't care what company's logo is printed on somebody's card. I want the actual insurance vehicle to do what you want it to do. Which is exactly what you should do. And Jason, when you're doing financial planning and you're mm-hmm. doing the risk management analysis, like what are you looking at? What are you looking for? And why would you why would you as a certified financial planner work hand in hand with a guy like Taylor? Yeah. Well, I mean, in anything we do, the client's interest is at the forefront of that, right? Whether we're talking about investment planning or insurance planning, um, we've always got to look at things through that lens that the client's interest is above all. Uh, so the model that you're describing, Taylor, shopping independently, looking at all of the available options and presenting you know, the top two or three options for the client, mm-hmm. we do that every day as financial planners when we're looking at um, solutions for our clients, right? Yeah, no. So what you're saying is, so let, let's just, let's use an example of somebody that's heading into retirement and we could probably talk about a lot of different situations here, but you know, there's a lot of people that don't want to work until they're Medicare eligible. They don't want to work to age 65. There's some people that do that enjoy what they do and they don't, you know, they're just working because it's what they love or they mm-hmm. don't know anything else. They have no hobbies or whatever. But there are a lot of people that would love to go, you know, I'll, I'll retire at 60. I would, but there's no Medicare, right? And my company plan doesn't roll over. So Jason, how do you address that first of all? And then when do you bring a guy like Taylor in to say, okay, well, let's figure out what's going on here. So one of the very first questions I think that we ask people when they come in and meet with us, for, you know, before they become clients and we're just learning about their goals and their dreams and what it is they want to accomplish, uh, you know, when do you want to retire? And I can't tell you a percentage, but it's a good amount. You know, it's, it's more than a small percentage that gives you an age of, say, 65. You say, you know, when do you want to retire? 65. Okay. <laughs> I know, I think I know why you're telling me 65, but tell me more about that. Why is it that Mm -hmm. 65 is the age? Is that, you know, is that when you want to travel or is that when uh, your kids are out of the house and you've got an empty nest or something like that? And oftentimes it's no, that's the age when I can get health insurance. You know, that's that's when I'm eligible. You almost have to remind them, like, I asked you when you wanted to retire. Right. Yeah. Not when you you think you've been told you should retire. Exactly. Exactly. It's not I'm not asking you when you're eligible for Medicare. I know that. I want to know when do you want to retire? What 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 is important to you? So um, when we dig a little deeper in there, maybe we find out that the answer is really, well, gosh, I can't stand the job that I'm at right now. Um, I don't get along with my coworkers or I, I would just prefer to be doing something different. I'd prefer to be spending time with my grandkids. I'd prefer to be on vacation with my spouse. I would want to be volunteering somewhere, but I can't leave my job because I'm tied to it because of my health insurance plan. Right. And that's a preconceived notion. And so guy like Taylor here, how do you help the financial planners say, this is really what's going on? Tell us about the way you dig into it and what are you looking at? Great question. So the first approach or the first step, honestly, is just talking with that prospective client or the person who has that question about, hey, when can I actually retire? And I think that that's one of the, you know, like you said, it's a preconceived notion where you may very well be able to get benefits that are as good or maybe even better than your current employer coverage offers you right now and not have to work until 65. But when it comes to finances, when it comes to health insurance, these two worlds are very confusing, which is why people need a true advisor or educator on their side. And to answer your question, the first step is just a needs analysis, which is who do you have that needs to be insured? So let's pretend that you do retire tomorrow. Okay. Say it's a 60 year old couple. Perfect. So 60 year old couple, I need to find out, do you have any health issues? Do we have any medications that we're taking? We're going to do a needs analysis and then we're going to go, look, I need to find out how much is being taken out of your paycheck every month to ensure you and your spouse, can we get an explanation of benefits for your current insurance plan so that I can compare 
deductibles, co-pays, networks, maximum out-of-pocket costs to these other products that may very well fit your need. If I find out that the coverage that you're on really can't be beat by anything out there, which happens sometimes, but honestly not that often, I'm going to tell you that. But if I do find a couple options out there that are really going to benefit you and your spouse, you're also going to know what those are, how much they cost and what the coverage will look like. Yeah, I was going to say, one of the biggest things there I think is cost. I mean, I, I think that, so before the Affordable Care Act destroyed most individual plans out there, mm -hmm. um, and now you go, you're going to go look on the exchange. I want you to tell everybody how that really works today, because it used to be that the number of carriers that you could get for individual health care. I mean, there was a bunch of companies that were doing it. A ton. And it had a lot of different products and a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. And now we've got a very limited number of options when it comes to individual health care coverage or you're forced to the exchange. Yeah, you have a limited number. So when the ACA, Affordable Care Act, was signed into law and we start seeing these plans pop up, we lost, I would say, probably 75% of the free market. And you have large companies out there that used to have a portfolio of 20, 30 different health insurance plans under one roof. They shut the doors to 95% of those. Maybe they only had one or two left. It was devastating. You saw it. A lot of people out there have seen it. Um, so the way that that would work, if you go to the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, and you go to the exchange, you want to take a look at some health insurance plans, you're going to see an initial monthly premium for that plan. Okay. And usually that's just an average monthly premium. And what that's based on are getting income subsidy credits. So I just dealt with this exact same scenario. It was last week. I had a gentleman call in. He has retired prior to age 65, and he wanted to know, hey, my wife and I, we need some health insurance. What can we do? I want to look at the exchange. I want to look at some ACA plans. I said, perfect, let's do that. So we hop online. We start looking at the prices. Once we go to plug in his income, everything changes. Right. That monthly premium that was showing on his screen doubled. So he thought he had a really good deal at first, and then we get down to the nitty gritty of it. And I said, I just want to warn you, we're going to plug in your income here. And I'll tell you right now, this was not an extremely high income. This was not a six figure earner. It doesn't take a whole lot to breach that threshold where you lose the subsidies. And now you're looking at what the true affordable care really is. And those monthly premiums are a lot higher than they used to be. Right. And then what the, 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 the other part about the, the ACA that I think hurt a lot of people is what the Affordable Care Act policies will cover, and more importantly, what they won't cover compared to what we had in the private uh, health insurance industry prior to the ACA. You've got a lot of things that they don't cover, and it, it seems to be fairly similar across the board. And the other thing that harms a lot of folks, too, is when we had our private health insurance just blooming and blossoming left and right, you could pick those plans up whenever you wanted to. With the Affordable Care Act, you've got very specific enrollment windows. And you granted, if you lose a job or have a life-changing event, it's gonna open the door for you to enroll in one of those plans. But some people don't get enrolled when they're supposed to, and they can't get into one of those plans. It, it really disrupted the entire health insurance market. It did. And there's a ton of questions about it, which is why you know, we're seeing a lot of people ask questions about health insurance more so than we did a few years ago. So Jason, going back to your point earlier, when you ask people when they want to retire and they say 65, and, and the main reason is because they want to wait until they're Medicare eligible. But when you get people that, to, to finally go, no, if I could do it tomorrow, I'd do it, right? Mm -hmm. So can we run the numbers and maybe you can find it? Then then talk to me about your process to get a guy like Taylor involved in in uh, understanding more about this person and and how do you build that into the financial plan and all that yeah so there's there's a couple different ways that we can go about that one is you know if we get to the heart of that discussion and, and we say okay let's build out a plan for you to retire by the time you're 62. so obviously there's going to be a gap there before you're eligible for medicare so we need to plan on some expense for health insurance we can go out and we can look at national surveys of what people on average are paying but just like any survey you know it's pretty much worthless once you get into the details of the specific client. And that's where bringing in an expert like Taylor, someone who can sit down with the client on their side of the table and say, let's dig a little deeper. Let's look at your income. Let's talk about your health. Here is a more accurate representation of what this healthcare coverage is going to cost you. 
Now we've got real numbers we can plug into their financial plan. We can plan on you know cash flows and things like that. We can budget for that and see, is retirement at 62 a feasible thing for you? Can we make this a reality? And now all of a sudden that that link in, in someone's brain where they have to stay at work you know, because of Medicare age and 65 gets broken and a new reality can start to form. Yeah. Well said. Yes. Yeah. No, it's perfect. And then and then so what you would do then in that instance is you'd say, okay, here's our gap, uh, coverage gap that you've got between 62 and 65. So we're, we, we need to plan on premiums of X for that period of time. And once you hit Medicare eligibility, if you're probably working with, uh, you know, Taylor on that, then he's going to go, okay, here's, here's the type of plan. If they stay in the same health they're in that they would be looking at, and here would be their out of pocket and all that. So you can then build that cost into uh, their retirement plan. So people can really get a eye opening view of the one biggest fear that people have, which is how, what happens if I get sick? Am I, am I going to go broke? Uh, you know? And so, understanding that health insurance and what's available and what's it going to cost and how's it going to impact on other things that you want to be able to do, I think is critical. Um, so that's why it's so cool that we can work together, certified financial planner, along with uh, an insurance consultant, not a salesperson, mm -hmm. to help guide people down the right path. Yeah, not only that, but you brought up the subsidies on some of those policies, right? Mm -hmm. There's a big tax planning opportunity there as well, that potentially if, if we're working alongside you, you have an understanding of what our clients are really trying to accomplish. We can control to some degree their income taxable right? income exactly you've done shows on that before and we've written articles on how to control your income in retirement maybe we're able to structure their income for the initial part of their retirement where they are qualifying for some of these subsidies on health insurance so it's really a collaboration between the financial planner the tax team a health insurance expert like taylor yeah it's it's really when it all comes together it's really cool um, let's let's switch gears a little bit, Taylor, because mm -hmm. we we're kind of hitting to getting to start to hit on Medicare, and I, mm -hmm. we're not going to do a show on Medicare. Uh, let's just suffice it to say mm -hmm. that Medicare, in and of itself, is uber confusing, and, <laughs> the, and and especially when you start having to file claims. So here you have the biggest part of our country, the population who is by the day becoming less mentally sharp mm -hmm. and then thrown into a scenario where first of all it's confusing on what am i getting and then i got to file claims and i got all these different pieces coming at me and i get rejection letters and i get this and i get and, and if they don't have somebody that's helping them if they don't have a son or a daughter or somebody that is saying hey no we're, we're i understand what's happening here and most people don't mm -hmm. you got to have a good insurance consultant to say, okay, this is what's really happening and I'm going to help you with it. And is that something you do? Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you that every year I end up picking up multiple clients per month just because they are, they're not a client. They call in because of the exact same situation you just described. Hey, I don't know you, Taylor, and I found you online, but I've got a couple claims here. I don't know who to turn to. I've tried dealing with my insurance company. I'm getting absolutely no help. I say, send them on over. I'll help you. I don't care. I mean, it's the right thing to do. And you're absolutely right. As people age, number one, they're supposed to be retired. They're supposed to be enjoying their life. The yeah. last thing they want to do is study insurance every year and all the changes that take place. And it is confusing. There's no doubt about it. But helping people fix those issues is for somebody who does it for a living like myself, we can fix it fairly quickly. 90% of the time, that's just because whoever was in billing at that medical office, they coded it incorrectly. Right. Your insurance company is not going to know that. Medicare can't help you. The insurance company can't help you. We got to go to the source of the bill. And I, I just did that again two weeks ago for a lady. She's not a client. She will be, but she called in. She has some bills. She needs help. Yeah, I, I know because I look at my poor mom who spent you know some time in a hospital. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't a COVID-related deal, but... But man, when she got out of the hospital and the bills start showing up and the claims start going, I mean, it's just like this pile of mail is on her table. And she's like, I don't know what to do. I agree. And when you look at some of those folks that have been on Medicare for a few years, and it is, it's sad because if they don't have someone like you, if she doesn't have her son to turn to or somebody to help them, they drown in those bills. They let that stuff sit around forever. And, you know, those companies aren't going away. They want their money. 
Right. Or at least they think they want their money until they realize the claim actually should be paid by the insurance company. So you kind of look at the advisor like the liaison at some time, sometimes yes. between the client and the insurance companies. Um, and that's absolutely help that we provide. That's, yeah. And I think that's critical. Um, mm-hmm. So <laughs> what, do you, what do you think that um, people need to be on the lookout for? I mean, I know, look, I, I see... Uh, ads on television. I hear ads no. on the radio. And Joe Namath, uh, the, fo- oh the, the old God. football yeah. players. I, mean, I know. Okay, so what are we? What are the? What are the people really? What are they selling here? So, oh, wow, that's a loaded question because I've got and quite can, a few you, answers. You can say whatever you want to say. Okay. right? Be just candid about it. Don't hold anything back. Okay, I will tell you right now that those commercials are designed to do exactly what they're doing. They got you talking about it. They got me talking about it. They've got our clients talking about it. Those ads are designed to confuse you and they work because they look so official. I've got to call that number and find out (laughs) what was the last one that I saw. It said when you join, we're not going to get too deep in the weeds here, but on Medicare, everybody has to pay for part B. Okay. Regardless of what other insurance you tie into it. And the ads are claiming that you can get all 12 months of your part B Medicare premium back. That's true for a very small percentage of low income people. Okay. You've got people out there making six figures calling in going, I want my part B premiums back. You said I could get them back. The ads work. You just called into a sales organization and trust me, they're going to confuse you worse than that commercial did. That's it's designed to, to create action. It's a call to action is what it is. You know, and, 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 the same thing happens in our world, Taylor, the, mm. the financial advisory world. I, and, and there's a lot of people out there that call themselves financial planners or financial advisors, and really they're nothing more than slick, what I call financial salespeople, mm-hmm. right? And our industry has created a lot of that. And so I think it's difficult to differentiate the trusted advisor, the certified financial planner who's acting in the capacity of a fiduciary, the insurance specialist, the, the, the guy that's working as a consultant that's really trying to look out for you, it's hard to differentiate that from the slick salesman out there. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. And I think that something that let's say you're regardless of whether you're on Medicare, not on Medicare, under 65, and you're just looking for health insurance options or you're looking for a financial advisor or a health insurance advisor, you know, first of all, call anybody here on this show. I mean, we'll help you. Right. But let's just say that you want to go shopping and you want to find an advisor as opposed to a sales agent. You know, how can you differentiate between the two? First of all, do not call directly into, uh, and I'll just talk about the insurance world, right? Don't call directly into an insurance company. And an insurance company is going to differ than a broker because an insurance company, they write their own paper policies. They're going to be the insurer of your health insurance. If you call directly into them, we already went over that. They're going to talk to you about the four plans they have. Call a broker, look up your local broker, and ask them a few questions. First off, how long have you been in business? If you talk to somebody and they're a licensed life and health agent and they've been in business for one or two years, I am not saying that they may not be amazing at what they do, but the chances of them seeing the changes that have taken place in the ACA market as well as Medicare over the last seven, eight, nine, ten years – they don't have that experience and truly understanding what to do about it. Yeah. Truly understanding. So again, not trying to be negative towards newly licensed agents by any means. Chances are they're not going to be that familiar with all the different products because guess what? As the uh, health insurance market changes as Medicare changes, so do all the insurance companies and all their plans. So if you haven't been around a few seasons to watch that, you're not really going to know what to expect next season. And then also ask them that question that we kind of went over before. Very simple question. Have you ever helped somebody with their insurance and not received a penny off of it? If their answer, the advisor's answer is absolutely. That's the person you want to work with. Yeah. So we're not on the other end of the phone just trying to sell you. We're here to help. So, Jason, you and I see this all the time, and we point it out, right? And then we go to a guy like Taylor to verify it. But... I don't do as many initial meetings as you do these days, and I'm not introducing you know to to clients. We got our, a, a whole bunch of certified financial planners here at the firm that are all doing that, but people will be over insured 
and not really even know it. When and, you see and, that. And, you, and you're like, wait a minute, you've got two insurance policies and you've got Medicare? Why? Uh, oh, well, this one does this and this one. I'm like, okay, no, we got we to gotta back up. So we're going so to take some of that stuff. And what do you do with that, Jason? Yeah, I mean, there, there's situations all the time. And we had Darren Newell on a podcast um, on the previous season, I believe, uh, and he talked about an example. Yeah, of he's the property being, casually. Yeah, talked about an example of someone being overinsured for homeowners coverage or something like that. So I'm sure you see that kind of stuff all the time where people have multiple policies. There's some overlap or there's some confusion maybe about which policy would kick in first. My call, the call that we will get. And yes, to answer your question, we do see it quite often. And it, again, it's not from our clients. This will be from people that are looking for help. And they'll ask the same question Dean just posed. They basically call and say, hey, I need a little bit of help here. I've got four insurance cards. I'm paying the monthly premiums. I don't know what they do. Can you help me? Absolutely. We take a look at it. And I, like you just identified, 90% of the time I look at this and I'm going, oh my goodness, how long have you been paying these premiums? Like you do not need these three plans. You've got the coverage you need here. Somebody, whoever helped you join these plans was just stacking on monthly premiums. They're not benefiting you in any way, shape, or form. They're just turning a commission. Yep. They're out there to just sell. That's a sales agent. That's the sales agent. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Who, who, who cares about one person and that's the person that they look at in the mirror every morning. That's the only person they care about. And if you're in this industry, and when I say this industry, I mean the industry of helping people with these confusing topics, whether it's their financial wealth or their financial health, whether it's their health insurance, it's a career. I'm here to do this forever. Yeah. It makes no sense to pile on three or four policies that you don't need because guess what? Number one, it's not morally correct in my personal opinion. It's the wrong thing to do. I don't want you doing that to my parents, me, my kids eventually. That's not how you treat other people. And number two, it's a really good way to make a lot of people upset because when they do find out that they're overinsured and they've got a bunch of stuff they don't even need, they're telling everybody they know, don't call that guy. Yeah. Next year will mark 35 years for me in, in this, this industry, in this industry, Congratulations. Next year, like 35 years. And what you just said uh, takes me back to uh, my first three months in the industry. Okay. All right. So I, I, I started out with a company. If I said the name, people would know it. Um, and I was 21 years old. I really didn't understand our industry at that time, but I thought that I wanted to help people. And so there was this one guy, he was in one of the offices upstairs and, you know, fancy office corner, got the nice views, you know, kind of the Wolf of Wall Street kind of a deal. And so I'm, I'm, I'm talking to this guy and he goes, son, he goes, this is the greatest industry in the world. He goes, you can make so much money so fast. And I'm like, okay. And so I went and thought about that. And, and a couple of days later, I, I came back in and I, I talked to that guy and I said, something you said really bothered me. So when you said you can make so much money so fast, that bothers me. I said, I think what I want to do is I want to do the right thing for people 100% of the time. And even if that means that I don't make a lot of money really fast, I think what that's going to mean is I'm going to have a lot of people that are going to trust me for a lot of years and I can have a great career. So that's going to be my approach. That is crazy because that is so similar to my experience in this industry. Like that's very similar. I haven't been in it 35 years yet, but I will eventually. Same thing. First yeah. company I got hooked up with, will not name them because I didn't know anything about the health insurance industry. I knew I wanted to help people. Same conversation. And I was told, You're, that's a pipe dream. You need to get applications. I want you to pull one to three applications out of every house you walk into. And I'm sitting there going, it made me want to, I had to go home and take a shower. I felt yeah. dirty. I'm like this, I'm not doing this. Yeah. And there, those people are still out there. Oh, they're out there in droves. They're out there. Yeah. And every year they mess up people's coverage and those people are calling in to get it fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is it, crazy. They, they exist in our industry, don't they, Jason? Still today. Yeah. Big Which is time. why it's so important that you ask if you're sitting across the table from whether it's a health insurance uh, professional or with a financial advisor, you ask them those questions that you just mentioned, Taylor, earlier on. Those are two really good questions. You know, the one that you said about uh, have you ever had to tell someone there's really not a whole lot that I can do to improve your situation or you help them just because it's the right thing to do and you're not necessarily going to get 
compensated out mm-hmm. of that transaction. And if their answer is, oh, I've never turned anybody away. I sell everybody. Le- hang up the phone. Yeah. yeah. That's the wrong guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Dean, you've got a really good story about a Yeah, situation this like was, that. Uh, this goes back into um, the uh, mid 2000s. Uh, it was probably just uh, pre Great Recession, maybe 2005, 2006. Um, guy comes in and, and, uh, single guy, his wife had passed on, uh, he had a daughter and he's like, I just want to make sure that I've got everything in order. I want to make sure that it's all good. And so I said, look, here's what we'll do. Um, we'll sit down, we'll, we'll take a look at your whole situation. I'll ask you a bunch of questions and really try to find out what you're doing and I'll do an analysis for you and I'll, and I'll let you know. And so we went through the whole thing and I honestly looked at a situation. I'm like, and this guy's doing like 98% of what he should be doing. And, and, I, and I told him, I said, I honestly, you, you might make one small tweak, but the reality is you're doing everything that you should be doing. And he sat there and he looked at me and said, are you serious? And I said, yeah. He said, I have visited with probably 20 advisors <laughs> in the last two years. And every single person that I talked to had something to say about what I was doing because they had a product that was going to be better than in almost every scenario, that product was going to lock my money up for a period of time and the broker was going to earn a big commission, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, I'm like, I would, I wouldn't change a thing. Not one of those 20 had been honest with them. That's right. Well, because, because they, they didn't know how to do that analysis. First of all, Taylor, Mm -hmm. they were just saying, Oh, here's some money. I'm going to, I'm going to beat up that product that he's in and go try to sell him something different. Right. Yep. And so the interesting thing was he thanked me, shook my hand and really thought he appreciated it. And I said, I said, Hey, it's my pleasure. And I said, I said, just don't forget if you know anybody that else that needs a good, honest second opinion, have them come my way. So like three years later, this lady shows up on my schedule. I don't know who it was. And then, and it says that she, he's referred by, she was referred by this guy. And I remembered him three years, three ago. years later. Awesome. And so the lady comes into my office and he's with her. Wow. All right. It's his daughter. No way. Yeah. Oh, cool. And finds out he's terminally ill and he's not going to be able to take care of stuff. And she doesn't know anything about it. And he's like, this is why I was here three years ago. Wow. He said, I want somebody to take care of my daughter. Yeah. Right. And so this lady's now been a client for close to 15 years. And, and so, yeah, I mean, it's doing the right thing a hundred percent of the time, mm-hmm. right? That's what, that's what really makes to me, you know, it's things like that. That's, that's what, uh, makes our job rewarding. Absolutely. And for if anybody watching this right now, you can't feel the emotion in the room. Like you can tell when people really are trying to help people, yeah. like they're actually trying to do the right thing. And it is, sometimes it feels like an uphill battle because, You've got the people in your industry that are out there not doing the right thing. We have the people in our industry not doing the right thing. But you're out there kind of fighting the good fight, trying to help those folks that, you know, they don't have anywhere to go. They well, don't have anybody to turn to. And, and Taylor, that's exactly why I started mm-hmm. the guided retirement shows, because I know that there's so many different issues that people face every single day. And if they can just get a little bit of education, it can be their defense against the financial salesmen out there that are out to just earn a commission. I love that. And that's what, whether they're going on to Medicare, whether they've been on Medicare, whether they're not going to touch Medicare for the next 10 years, I always take an educational approach to their health insurance because I'm a huge believer in the simple fact that People are smart enough to make their own decisions as long as they understand what those decisions are. Right. In finances, in health insurance, unless you do this for a living, you're not going to know what direction to go because there is so there are so many options out there. So educating people up front, number one, you're going to find that that goes a long way, a long way. Number two, they're going to end up telling their friends about you. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. good. To that point, Taylor, if if I'm listening to this podcast right now and I'm, say, 66, 67 years old, mm-hmm. I could get on Medicare, but I'm working, I'm enjoying my job. But I know that sometime, say, a year from now, my plan is to retire, to leave my work. Uh, and I know that I'm going to lose my employer health plan. When should I be reaching out to someone like you to talk about my options for Medicare and supplement policies and really map those things out? Say, Say I'm a year, year and a half away. I love that question. And my 
initial response would be if you have a question about it reach out then it doesn't matter if you're retiring in one year two years three years start the conversation whenever that question pops into your head ideally what we'll find is that if you know exactly when you're going to retire let's start talking about 12 months before that because i want you i i don't want you to be stressed i don't want you to feel rushed i want you to actually understand what it is that you'll be looking at and it gives us plenty of time plenty of time but that being said I've also got the people that call me and say, hey, I'm retiring tomorrow. I need yeah. help. I can help them too, but it's a little <laughs> stressful sometimes. Jason, it happens. Jason, we, we hate that one. Yeah, it yeah. happens. <laughs> hey, Dean, can I meet with you? I quit my job last week. Yeah. yeah. You, you uh, quit when last week? Uh, okay. I'd like to talk about my retirement. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. So I would say the sooner the better. If that question pops into your head and, and, and people think, well, I should, I should start looking at this, that's when you should call. We can look at it five years in advance. I mean, things will change between now and then, but the premise and the education is still going to hold still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been fascinating, and um, I think it's a great conversation. There's more that we can talk about when it comes to health insurance, and so maybe we um, maybe we get you back on, Taylor, another time. We'll brainstorm about some other things, but I know that, that there's, uh, there's more to talk about mm -hmm. in this arena, and it's hard to generalize. I think the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway for everybody is that, you know, you're in your own personal situation, you and your family, your spouse, and we get it from a financial perspective, but I think that from a health insurance perspective, it's just as critical. You've got your own questions that you need answered. Mm -hmm. And that's really what you need to do is go at it instead of saying, give me general education, give me specifics about what's, Amen. what do I need? Yep. Right. Amen. And that's what, the, that's what people can get by, by giving you a call. That's exactly right. Yes. All right. Well, beautiful. Thanks for uh, joining us here on the Guided Retirement Show, Taylor. Appreciate it. Dean, thank you, Jason. Thank you, guys. I would love to come back, too. All right. Cool. <laughs> Let's do it again. Thanks so much for joining us. I think you'll see exactly why we had Taylor Garner on here uh, of the Guided Retirement Show. Absolutely passionate about what he does, doing the right things. Check out the show notes for a, a free consultation from one of our certified financial planners here at Barber Financial Group. You can also find a link for a contact information for Taylor Garner if you wish to talk to him. Thanks for joining us on the Guided Retirement Show. And as always, make sure you subscribe, share this with your friends. And if you're watching us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and a like. Starting your route to retirement. Investment advisory services offered through Barber Financial Group and SEC Registered Investment Advisor.